in holy baptism, Doris Schnelli was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sins. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing the processional hymn, Amazing Grace. the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we speak together the psalmody. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Put not your trust in princes. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 1. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without coming I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I want you to know, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So am I, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. This is the word of the Lord. We continue by singing as it printed in your bulletin, Children of the Heavenly Father.
chapter. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known the Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now continue by singing the sermon hymn, Take My Hand and Lead Me. my hand and lead me on life's way. Direct, protect, and lead me from day to day. Favor I go astray. So take my hand, O Savior, and lead the way. Rages I need not fear. You, the rock of ages, are always near. Close by your side abiding, I fear no Stop it. In peace I go. Lord, when the shadows lengthen, nothing can impede me. So take my hand and lead me unto the end. The word of God today is from Dorse's confirmation verse from Romans 1 verse 16 which reads, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and to the, also to the Greeks. So far the text. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word gospel means good news. And what was the good news of which Doris was not ashamed? Remember the Bible story of the Israelites fleeing from the Egyptians in the Exodus? Pharaoh and his army is closing in on the Israelites on one side, and the Israelites are hemmed in on the other side by the Red Sea. They were trapped and nowhere to go to escape annihilation. Rescue had to come from outside of them. So Moses says to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of God which he will work today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. 
Well, you know what happened. And after the rescue, the Israelites sang, The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The same is true for Doris, you, and me. As Doris was wandering through her wilderness in life, she had the devil and all the evil angels in hell galloping toward her on one side and the book of the law on the other side standing before the gates of paradise and the law was saying, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. And while Doris was a saint, she was by no means perfect for her own death indicates the wages of sin is death. But God through his word said to Doris, be still and see what God of heaven and earth will do for you. God sent his only begotten son, Christ Jesus, from all eternity, equal to the Father and the Spirit to be the substitute man for Doris and for all mankind. Jesus in our place kept the law perfect for us and he came to pay for our transgressions. So when God laid upon Jesus the sin of us all, Jesus was and is the spotless lamb of God who shed his holy precious blood to erase our sins, Doris's sins. And Jesus became the end of the law for all who would believe this truth. Doris saw her rescue in Jesus from Satan's sin and death for the gates of paradise were now open to her. By her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, her life under the law was now perfect through Jesus' perfect life and she was covered in his righteousness. Now the law couldn't keep her out. Now Satan can't accuse her of her sins before God. Now death won't hold her in the grave. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. She didn't look to her own earthly righteousness because she knew her righteousness was filthy rags to God. Rather, she knew her salvation for us from outside of her. It was in Jesus alone. And when Doris realized this in her childhood years, she rejoiced in God her Savior Jesus, and her heart sang out the words of one of her favorite psalms, Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in the Son of man in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he whose hope is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord his God, who keeps his faith forever. Oh, but some may think she's dead. So how has she been rescued from Jesus by death? Yes, we're going to all die. We all face the wages of sin is death. But here's the good news. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. From scripture, when Jesus raised little Tabitha, the little girl from death, Jesus said about her death that she was only sleeping. Doris's body is only sleeping and her living soul has returned to God who gave it. Doris and all believers in Christ will sleep in their graves to await the resurrection of the dead on the last day and she along with all believers in Christ will be raised with a glorified body and with her own eyes she will see God. Doris didn't receive this gospel good news by osmosis. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim salvation. And her parents, Rudolph and Edna, delivered the gospel of Christ to their family by bringing, first of all, their daughter, Doris, and all their children forward for baptism. We're in the baptismal waters by the power of God's word. Doris was washed in the atoning blood of Jesus and the spirit entered Doris's body as his temple to nurture and establish her firm in her faith, in her heart and in her mind. Weekly, she went to church and Sunday school for her. After all, that's what you do on Sunday. And Doris wouldn't think of skipping church because she was not ashamed of the gospel. Her father always taught her, don't get in the habit of skipping church. 
to warn her of what apathy and complacency can do. When Doris's mom suffered a stroke, her dad on Sunday mornings would get his wife up and dress her to go to church. It's not easy to get a stroke patient dressed and ready to go anywhere. And as Doris saw her dad getting her mom ready for church, Doris thought, wow, I have no excuse for not getting ready for church. But even more so, Doris was seeing her dad bringing her mom to the place where she could hear about her only hope and rescue and salvation from what plagued her. And it was at church where she could hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and be strengthened in her faith. In Doris's teen years, Naturally, she was confirmed in German back then by Pastor Stunkel at Trinity Lutheran Church in Freistadt, and her pastor gave Doris her confirmation verse to remember all her days to not be ashamed of the gospel. When you see by faith what Jesus has done for you, how could you be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus? So one of her favorite songs was My Jesus, I Love Thee, which is a song that spoke about loving Jesus in life and loving Jesus in death. When I received my call to Emmanuel as pastor in 1993, Melbourne and Doris and all that generation were my age at that time, and we did ministry together for 28 years. Faithful people also to the gospel of ministry. And when Melbourne and Doris were older, and Melbourne was failing in his memory, one of the saddest moments in my life was seeing Doris leading Melbert by the hand out of church and to the car to go home. So Doris would each Sunday would get Melbert up for church and she would do for him as her dad did for her mother. And Melbert was brought to hear the good news of Jesus for him at church. Then one day, a month or so ago, when Doris had difficulty getting up out of her chair and, and it was getting dressed was a chore, Merle entered into the house and said, Mom, it's time to get ready for church. And Doris said, Yes, my dad always said, don't get in the habit of not going to church. St. Paul, the writer to the letters to the Romans, knew how the gospel looked to outsiders. How the Jews stumbled at the gospel of Christ crucified and how the Greeks shrugged off the gospel of Christ as foolish. Doris was very conscious of how the gospel looked to outsiders and to people in the church. Melbert was a trustee for many years and Doris would help Melbert in some trustee jobs at church. And Melbert and Doris wanted the church building, property and lawn to look good and appealing to outsiders so that it might perhaps welcome some to come and hear the word of God. I appreciated that mentality as I instructed the trustees on how important it was to keep our buildings and property in good repair and in good order for it reflects how seriously we consider ministry. Doris always said, the first song in church needs to be familiar for it leads people to be motivated to be in church and to participate in worship. And the last song in church should be uplifting and encourage people as they leave and be filled with joy in their heart for God in the gospel. And when it was not, Doris would give me a little nudge as she walked out of church and said, well, who picked those songs this morning? They weren't too good. Or the songs were a little better today. Or even, I like those songs today. It was really good. Keep it up. She wasn't being mean about it as I agreed 100% with Doris because if the first song is a dud, it sets the tone for the whole rest of the worship service. Doris was interested also in the gospel of Christ reaching people locally. She wasn't ashamed to light a little fire under the pastor to check up on a person that she 
might not have seen, and I didn't mind it one bit. She would call me on the phone and ask, has anyone gone to see so-and-so? I haven't seen them in a while, and when I call, I can't seem to reach them by phone. And then I would reply of when the last time I did see them, and if I had not seen them in a while, I would tell Doris that I'll follow up on them with a visit, and I'll let you know. Or she would call and say, I spoke on the phone with so-and-so and they seemed a little bit down. I think it would be good for you to go pay a visit and cheer them up a little bit. And then she would say, I'm not trying to get in your business and tell you what to do, but I think you should know. Then I would say, oh, Doris, I don't mind you calling me and letting me know about people in need because sometimes people go to the hospital and return home and then they get disgruntled because the pastor never came to see them. And it's hard to visit someone when you don't even know that they were even in the hospital. So I appreciate you telling me this. You are my eyes and ears in the community, so you can call me at any time. It doesn't bother me. That's just some of the ways in which Doris lived out her confirmation verse of not being ashamed of the gospel. For we are all members of the body of Christ, and we should have the same care for one another as Christ cares for us. And besides, as Doris knew full well, the only lasting hope in this world is Jesus, who is the way to salvation and the key to the door to eternal life where everlasting joy will crown our heads. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this saving gospel has come to you as well through your parents, your pastors, teachers, and friends. And by the grace of God, that gospel word was the power that brought you to faith in your salvation in Christ, or it drew you closer to God in Christ Jesus. We just came through a year of COVID, or so many months and so forth, when many churches closed and many churches just went to online services. It only takes seven weeks to develop a habit. And many, perhaps even some of us, haven't returned back to church or not quite regularly. And old habits do die hard. Doris would go to us along and say, don't get in the habit of not going to church. For by not going, it seems as if we're being ashamed of the gospel. In reality, that would be the truth. But yet the truth also remains that we all stand in the same position as Doris. Satan and hell on one side, and on the other side, the law before the gates of heaven locked behind that perfect demands of the law. Where's our rescue? Keep coming and seeing and hearing and believing what God has done for you through Christ Jesus. Doris wasn't ashamed to tell it. I'm not ashamed to preach it. And you are not ashamed to confess it. And so we confess along with St. Paul Christians of all ages and Doris, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Doris Marie Lampy Schnelli was born on January the 16th, 1928, and went to be with her Lord Jesus on November the 16th, 2021. Doris was born on a dairy farm near Freistadt, Missouri, to the late Rudolph and Edna Lampy. She was baptized in the Christ on January the 22nd, 1928. She attended Trinity Lutheran School and confirmed her Christian faith on March 29, 1942. She and her brothers and sisters grew up milking cows by hand. She graduated from Verona High School in 1946 and worked as a secretary for the L.A. Woods Agency of the Ohio National Life Insurance Company in Springfield from 1946 to 1952. 
just a little side story of how Doris, you know, they always kept things in order and nice and clean, that the Lampy family, where they lived uh, as when she was a child, received a reward for having the best-looking mailbox in all of Lawrence County. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> Doris had no intentions to marry a farmer, but when she met Melbert, her plans changed. On June the 8th, 1952, she was united in marriage to Melbert Lee Schnelli of Lockwood, Missouri. They shared 61 wonderful years together working on their farm. God bless their marriage with five children. Doris was a homemaker who enjoyed cooking for family and friends and trying out new recipes. For 20 years, she volunteered as a foods leader in 4-H. Doris also loved being outside, mowing the yard with her John Deere tractor and growing flowers. Her greatest pleasure was spending time with family. And as a faithful member of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Lockwood, she was active in the Lutheran Women's Missionary League and Braille Workers. Doris was preceded in death by her husband Melbert, her parents, grandson Troy Schnelli, her brothers Norman and Alfred Lampy, sister-in-law Mary Lampy, brother-in-law Harold Schnelli, and sister-in-law Evelyn Schnelli. Doris was survived by her two daughters, Carol and her husband David Fink of Washington, Missouri, Diane and her husband Greg Black of Buffalo, Missouri, three sons, Dale and his wife Melody Schnelli of Overland Park, Kansas, Merle and his wife Amy Schnelli of Lockwood, Missouri, and Jerry and his wife Tina Schnelli of Golden City, Missouri. There's one sister, Grace, and her husband, Gilbert Doss of Fry Stop, Missouri. Two sisters-in-law, Pearl Lampy of St. Louis, Missouri, and Jean Schnelli of Lockwood, Missouri. There's 15 grandchildren, 12 great-grandchildren, and many other relatives and friends. The family would like to express their sincere thanks also to Dr. Angie Weitzel for her loving care. Please stand for prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, here I am. Give to the family of Doris Schnelli and all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence of your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Receive our thanks for Doris Schnelli and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. And, O oh God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the recessional hymn.